Right, welcome back to you. Let's quickly catch up on all things sport. Whilst Ferrari's Charles Leclerc secured pole at the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, it's Team Red Bull who walked away all smiles today, securing positions one and two. Sergio Perez becomes the first repeat winner of the, um, of the Baku City circuit, and he was followed by his teammate Max Verstappen. After the action from the sprint race yesterday, F1 delivered once more today when photographers and pit crew were almost run over by Esteban Ocon in a dramatic finish. Now, to unpack the race and all that unfolded is Formula One analyst Gary Formato. He joins us now in studio. Gary, thank you so much for your time. Great to be here. Thank you for coming in. It's always great having you. So I know you watched uh, the race. Tell us how you experienced it and talk to us about Checo. I mean, he's the first man to go ahead and, and win twice um, in Baku. Well, I'll tell you what, look, Checo, it's this, we all know he's got a great car. So he, you know, any opportunity like today that presented itself to him to win, he took advantage and did win. I don't think that he would have beaten Max had he not had Max not come in early um, under the yellow flag, which then turned into a safety car period. And that's obviously where Checo got the advantage. But listen, nonetheless, he, he drove out in front, kept Max you know, just, just uh, far enough behind him to, to, to win the race. So um, great result. And um, you know, I think probably, although Max didn't look too unhappy when he got out the car, you know, I it certainly think he's, he's putting Max under a little bit of pressure. Now. I don't think we, we know Max doesn't want to lose, um, and certainly to his teammates. Definitely, Max doesn't want to lose. But speaking about him, he came in second. Um, what does that tell us about Red Bull? You know, why are they so? Why have they set themselves so far uh, far from the rest? What is it that they're doing well? Well, I'll tell you. Red Bull's got a man called Adrian Newey in their team, and um, you know, when the new regulations arrived last year, I did, I, you know, I did suspect that Red Bull would have would have the upper hand because the regulation changes were predominantly aerodynamic. You know, in terms of the new cars, the way that they worked, and what have you, the under, the, the wing that now it works the, the underneath the car called ground effect. So. I, they're always going to have an advantage and they just entered into this era um, you know with the upper hand and remember every people have to now catch up to them first of all and then go one better to actually beat them but Red Bull obviously doing their homework as well um, but you know and they're also making hay while the sun shines because there is a reduction the, the wind tunnel time that they get being the championship leaders and championship winners is not as much as everybody else gets to spend in the wind tunnel so they should be really good at the start of the year and obviously the idea is that everybody else should be able to catch up but we'll see how that pans out. Leclerc where did he go wrong I mean he started off at pole but uh, you know he, he, he was overtaken by Max Verstappen as well. Yeah I don't so even not fast enough. Not exactly not fast enough but I think can be happy with the result in actual fact a pole position nice afternoon you know uh, on Friday and then to actually bring the car home he's had a terrible season I mean he hasn't finished a race this year so to finish on the podium I think you know, is, is, is only a good thing for them and for Ferrari lots of changes at Ferrari as well going on um, but I think they can be happy and now their season really has got up to a start today Let's talk about that last lap where we saw the photographers as well as some of the crew that, <laughs> you yeah. know, Ocon, I'm laughing because luckily <laughs> nobody got injured. So that's, you know, that's the important yeah. thing. Nobody was hurt. Um, but we all saw what happened. Do we blame Ocon? What exactly happened there? No, I think it's the FIA. You've got to blame the FIA and the track organ and the, and the race organizer. I mean, they were, they were, the, the Australian organizers were sanctioned for allowing so many fans onto the track post race as well. That was a, an issue there. So to have this sort of thing happening um, during a Grand Prix and allowing photographers, uh, or officials to set a park for May or whatever it was that was going on there. Um, just unfortunately for Formula One, and they've got to say, Formula One at the moment is really doing a great job in terms of the professionalism and how they're presenting themselves is fantastic. And this today was just a big slip. Um, it just looked very unprofessional. Of course, very dangerous, but I think most importantly, you know, in live TV, to see that was um, you know, not what Formula One really wanted. But they'll address it very quickly. Yeah, I mean, the result actually could be a devastating one, but like I said, luckily yeah. nobody was injured there. Yeah. We have to speak about Sir Lewis Hamilton. Yes. coming in at six. What is happening there? In fact, I should be asking you, what is happening with his car? What, what is the problem? Is it the car? Is it Lewis Hamilton? Um, do you think we can see him do one better than um, Michael Schumacher? You know, that's, that's, the, that's the big question. I mean, he obviously wants that eighth championship. There's no doubt about it. But I've got to be honest, I think that the, the clock is now ticking. Um, you know, he's 38 years old, 39 next year. Um, although if you look at Alonso, it hasn't really slowed, slowed him down being, being at the age of 42. But Hamilton does need a car to be able to, to perform. And, you know, it's as Red Bulls arrived in this new, new era of Formula One with the upper hand, Mercedes-Benz did that years back when we introduced the turbo and the hybrid engines into Formula One. And they had the upper hand for many years and Hamilton took full advantage of that. It hasn't been the same. So the eighth title um, is starting to look, I would have to say, for the first time I'd have to admit that it, it's probably looking a little bit unlikely. But you never know, but it's not looking good. 
Definitely. Very quickly, before we go, we are running out of time. I have to touch on MotoGP. You know, one of these days I'm going to have you and Clinton Seller here at the <laughs> same time <laughs> so that we can talk about Formula yeah. 1 and MotoGP at the same time with both of you here. But I have to ask you about Brad Binder. I mean, we all love Brad Binder. Yeah. He did exceptionally well. But I do want to ask you, you know, about the psyche of somebody who was leading for such a long period of time and then to be overtaken in your last four laps whilst he is a professional. How does that affect him psychologically? And go Going on to the next thing, is this going to be a hindrance for him? Well, look, he's, he's a South African, so I'd have to say he's tough. It's not going to affect him <laughs> that badly. But, I mean, you know, I think the K team have definitely come on a, a lot stronger this year, you know, starting at the front, winning that sprint race, you know, a, a, a couple of races ago, winning yesterday off and again. There's massive improvement from KTM. So, you know, I think they, they just take the lessons from it. So they know where they're weak and where they've got to improve. The Ducati has been outstanding now for the last couple of years. It really has been the bike to beat. So KTM is taking the challenge to them. So I think lessons well learned, and I think they'd be quite happy with where they are. So, you know, go and put the, the, you know, the lessons into action and, and, and make the bikes better. And, um, you know, let's say maybe we can see some, some uh, Sunday afternoon wins from Brad as well this year, which would be fantastic. Definitely. Gary, we're going to have to leave it there for now, but thank you so much for coming in. As I said, it's always great having you here. That is Formula One analyst Gary Fermato chatting all things Formula One. Of course, it was the Azerbaijan Grand Prix today that started at 1 p.m. and it's all done. And we saw Sergio Perez there taking number one and Max Verstappen number two. So good uh, on Red Bull there. We'll have more sport for you later. Rapiwa Madzena is back with you at the top of the hour. For now, stay with us.